So here we are, as, as we told you earlier, we are doing this uh, second special show dedicated to the Ketoxen Festival that is happening currently in Tenerife, Iceland, in the Canary Islands in, in, in Spain. Um, the festival has been, as any, uh, everything, uh, affected by COVID uh, restrictions. But uh, aside from, from that fact, they have been able to, um, to deliver a, an amazing um series of concerts uh, having happening uh, physically on location and also virtually here on this channel and and it's gonna be this is gonna unfold until january where we are doing the late uh, the la the latest um, broadcast on this festival but today uh, we have with us uh, gonzalo cardoso uh, he is uh, an artist and, and label curator from from portugal and he's um kind of linked and connected and he's going to tell us uh, to the festival um, because he has been um, behind the residency uh, that unifies two two projects with the, the first one being Keroxen and the second one being uh, Discrepan the label run by by Gonzalo uh, and this has crystallized with the with the uh, residency uh, hold by this Portuguese duo called Banha da Cobra which we are going to listen to the concert right after this interview and we want to welcome him hello gonzalo how are you hello hi welcome to the to this broadcast um yeah as we were saying you you uh you are the man behind uh, discrepant records uh which is uh, for those who don't know it's a, a label based uh, i guess uh, in between the three countries right now and it, it holds it has been releasing music uh, for a while with artists that's, uh, like Pierre Bastien, people like us, Felix Blume, Mike Cooper, Yannick Dobby, Tassa Stamon and among many other artists and it also kind of a uh, I don't know I don't know if you feel like the, this way but for us it, it, it looks like a larger corporation because it has um, uh, various sub labels dedicated to the distribution and edition of vinyl cassette CDs and uh, even printed uh, printed books. So uh, I don't know if there is a question there, but just uh, Gonzalo, maybe you you should walk us through uh, what's uh, Discrepan and what we can find in this massive and amazing catalog of music. Uh, well, Discrepan. I first started Discrepan as um, as as a blog. It was first a blog that I decided to upload uh, mixtapes and reviews. This is more than ten years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and very quickly, I realized it was some kind of music that I really enjoyed that wasn't being released. So I just and, and I like the I really like the archival format that is vinyl. So I decided to release one record, and that record went really well. Uh, so I just carried on, and uh, because mm -hmm. I'm an avid kind of music listener and. And collector, and and um, you know, going to concerts. So everything just started going very, very fast. Until well, ten years later, I now run so it's four labels, mm -hmm. mostly four, yeah, four labels. So Discrepan is the main label, mm -hmm. and then there's Sukata Tapes, which is just on on tape, like the name implies. Mm -hmm. Then there's Suk Records, which is more oriented on the dance. But still weird, still with the discrepant motto, and then there's uh, there's a farsa discos, which is it's a bit of a weird one. They're mini albums of made up projects. That's why I call it farsa. Um, mm -hmm. So it's all kind of like fake mm -hmm. uh, made up press releases. And I think that's it. No, those, those are the four. Um, Pacific City. Pacific City is a new one, which is mm -hmm. run, which is basically by Spencer Clark of the Skaters and. And many other projects uh, which I've been working with for a while. He had his label, and now I'm I'm kind of executive producing, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, we're working together on his projects and projects that he cherishes and to release his records, uh, Pacific City Visions. And then there's um, yeah, that's it. I think that's it for uh, for the record label. <laughs> like you said, there's many. As many artists, uh, I mean, the catalog is it's 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 almost like a record a month, sometimes more because of the other sub label. So it's 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 pretty crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it seems like also there is like um, uh, even though that it seems pretty much eclectic, 
uh, in terms of genres. It seems like uh, there is a, a certain consistency on on the kind of works um, uh, you present. Um, it, I, I guess, it's more conceptual and in uh, and maybe even political. I don't know, um, but you you can find many different genres of the music on on these uh, uh, different labels, right? Yes, I mean that was my aim because I I don't like to focus myself on a particular genre, mm. so. I mean, Discrepin really, when it when it started, was more of like an experimental, more on an ambient soundscape kind of mm. uh, kind mm. of vibe. But mm. then it kind of reflects my taste in music. So I, I, you know, there's like certain moments where I'm releasing more free jazz from Lebanon, for mm. example, mm. and that, that mm. was a moment. Then there's other moments where I'm where I'm releasing more like collage type of mm. Dadaist collage uh, albums, mm. which kind of reflects my literally my what i'm listening to at the time what excites me and there's no particular genre like i remember at some point uh, I, I was obsessed well, not obsessed but like it, it was a thing where i really wanted to make sure i cover all genres <laughs> of music so i i, I make sure i've got a, like a, a rock record <laughs> a, a cumbia record a metal record you know like but in the yeah. end it's pointless because everything kind of like interconnects in the way i mean there is quite a lot and of of different genres but i like the way all of them too are kind of like they're not a drawing on, on its they, they cannot be classified in the record in a record shop as this or that maybe mm -hmm. the classification what i thought before would be just discrepant so that's yeah. what, that was my aim to have like a, a genre of music that you mm. cannot classify yeah 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 it seems like because uh, on the last few years we have been like um well, I guess since always, but but now it's even more because of the massive amount of information we get daily, that um, uh, labels have to kind of focus on, on a very specific uh, genre in this case. But sometimes it's pretty interesting to see how labels such as Discrepant become, um, yeah, kind of curated selection of works, and and for those who are interested on on what uh, to listen on on this label you have to attend to to your own criteria which is uh, uh, perfectly good i guess it's like uh, it's the next uh, it's some sort of evolution from from um, um, from musical critic for instance uh, on labels that you were focusing uh, a few years ago you were reading uh, reviews from uh, specific writers to get the, the music you like and now you, we have labels that 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 um, they reflect on that, and I think it's it's pretty bold. I don't know if you yeah. have that feeling around that. I, I, I do, but in a less kind of like I I I have this uh, perception that some people, um, some fans of the label have exactly the same taste as I do. So they will buy anything, they will get any album without even uh, researching it. You know, like mm -hmm. everything I release, they, they will they will be into, and then. Mm -hmm. There's loads of other people where you can tell they, they like they like certain things and then they hate other ones, so they're not in the same. And that's, yeah. that's really what I what I mean. I, I like both both mm. sides of the, of the of the coin because it's mm. not about uh, releasing uh, music to please everyone or to please yeah. uh, mm. you know. I mean, it's it's hard because uh, the mo uh, the more as you grow, the more financial decisions come into place. Like if the, if you release yeah. something that's something really risky. Mm. that you might end up with you know loads of unsold copies mm. but uh, mm. at the same time you know i always say uh, i have a lifetime to to sell them to make sure yeah. people get to, mm. to the right people i mean we're talking mm. limited editions of 300 500 mm -hmm. maximum a thousand uh mm. vinyls you know and you always mm. if you think about it there will be more than a thousand people that will be interested in 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 purchasing this kind of like you know, I, I still call it archival format because that's the point of having something on a physical. It's something that will last, will mm. probably outlast you. You know, outlast yeah. us. You know, in our lifetime. So, mm. um, but I think I, I digress. No, you you were saying about yeah, the music critic. I mean, it, it 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 does go in line with it. I see it that way, but I don't really think about it because, like I said, I I, I I'm constantly looking for music and constantly trying to be surprised. By mm -hmm. new music, old music. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I guess it is that kind of same same of feeling that I, I want to surprise myself with with the label too. Yeah, it it seems like in this way that uh, there is a um, a process that's in, in constant change. That it uh, even that it's an editorial um, 
workflow. It has some creativity behind it because it seems like uh, each release uh, is not like that it is related, but it has some kind of resonance on the previous one, uh, resonance or contrast, and this can also work together and it's uh, it's acceptable, especially if, if you have an audience uh, or an, uh, and a target uh, people you reach that already know that this game is going on. Uh, I'm guessing it makes it easier for them to know, okay, this is going to be a discrepant record, so I might be interested even though uh, I never heard about this artist or I really don't like the music he does. I don't know I don't know if your artist uh, had this feeling also and, and, and are aware of this this way of functioning and, and maybe change their their the material they deliver to you or is, is, is that something you talk with them? Um, I mean, it's I, I, it's because I've been so busy in the last uh, few years. Are you talking about the way artists approach me, or or yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it used to be me, mostly me getting. It's very rare that I release something that I get sent, like a demo. I mean, I do mm -hmm. listen to all of them, but uh, I mean, I, I can tell from the first. Sometimes I can tell from the first lines of an email. Mm. Uh, if, if you know, or or by the first two seconds of listening to it, you know, I know it's harsh, but it's it it is yeah, it is, mm. it is. Mm. Um, but in terms of uh, working with artists, I mean, it's very important that I, I that I, I I try to create a relationship with the artist like a friend, like a friendship relationship. I don't want it to be like a like a, like just a contract between a, yeah. a label yeah. and the artist. So mm. sometimes it's very important that if if I don't get along, or if the if the artist doesn't get along with me, then it, it doesn't matter how good the music is and how well. I, I'm not. I, I wouldn't be. I know down the line it, it will will have some problems, and I don't need that kind of thing in my life. Or neither do they. So it's a very even sometimes. It, it could be years before I meet an artist and I can and we can chat face to face. But mm. I always try to eventually do it. Um, it's it's very important that we are all the same wavelength from the start. So in terms of of the music uh, and my suggestions, I mean yes, there is there is there is that back and forth uh, about, and it goes down. It goes back to the question you asked. So if if I have some suggestions and the artist uh, totally disagrees, then there's no point of like continuing yeah, yeah. Mm. our relationship because it's not gonna go anywhere. You know, if it mm. if it starts in the wrong foot, it's not gonna go anywhere. But um, in, I'm usually pretty open to an artist vision of what they want to offer uh, as a release and I try to interfere as little as possible so it's more of a mm. question of me um, being in tune with what he's offering and, and this could go from the music to the artwork to to the way it's mastered to the way it's presented the title everything mm. if I believe in it then I'm totally into it but if I have if there's too many little things that I don't quite get yeah. I probably wouldn't even go into it because I don't feel mm. comfortable suggesting yeah. an artist to change its vision. That's that's a super interesting approach, and and I, and I I, t I totally <laughs> relate to that. Um, uh, for the time I, I've been also editing uh, music, and and it's something crucial, especially when we are so far away. Usually, uh, not even because of COVID, uh, just because. Uh, finally, you end up working with people that it's hard to find, and and, and I, I love you mentioned that that. The goal finally is to meet that person personally, oh, yeah. and yeah, yeah, as, yeah. A, as a crucial part of the whole process. I yeah. think it's 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 fundamental. Um, and I want to ask you because uh, and 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 that's probably the, the reason why we are t chatting today. Aside from from the fact that for us it's a discovery of this crepe, but um, uh, I want you to explain us uh, how how this three leg uh, project happened at, uh, with Keroxen and specifically with uh, Banya da Cobra and its and this residency which we are going to see in a concert after the, this interview. Tell us a little bit about uh, about this. Sure. Um, so I've, I've been working with Kerrickson for a, a few years now. We first met, I think, in 2015. Mm -hmm. I was coming a lot to the Canary Islands. And, um, I mean, I was leaving to go back. I was leaving. I lived in London for for a long time, for, for 17 years. Mm -hmm. I lived in London. But, I, I, you know, I was tired of it. I was tired of the... Of the experimental music scene there, I found it very small, very very limited. So I was looking, always looking for other places where it's less obvious to have to present uh, more out there kind of music or more risky music mm -hmm. that is not in the commercial mm -hmm. side. And, and mm -hmm. Carolsen was a refreshing, really refreshing um, yeah. a proposal 
in a place where you don't usually expect it, uh, which mm-hmm. is Tenerife. You know, you usually expect yeah. things like this, like uh, in, in, I don't know, Barcelona, Berlin, yeah. London, mm-hmm. but suddenly there was this oasis, what I call, of experimental music. So we mm. we got in touch, and like like the examples I was saying before, we got along, which is very important. We, mm-hmm. the com- you know, not only we, we became, we, we worked well together, but we became friends. Uh, since then, I've been living in... Uh, in uh, so I lived in La Gomera and I'm living in Tenerife too, and um, I mean I'm always moving around. But to go down to the to the point, so there was always this idea of doing uh, residency with these Crepin as we close. We so I, it was a very short one last year where I played, but um and and in 2015. But now mm-hmm. we're kind of working together as uh, we're trying to to get their label side of things to take off, and I'm uh, helping with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it makes sense to also have this crepin involved in some kind of curation of the festival. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and particularly it was interesting because, uh, I mean, um, from the things I propose in my label, a lot of it is is there's a lot of room for artists that are exp- so it, it's like I would call it the exp- the, the, exp- the soundscapey side of things. So, and in this year. Uh, the festival couldn't really um, have be in the tank, so we had to be like um, uh, sitting down, more mm-hmm. exponential uh, concerts. So I mm-hmm. thought Benny the Cobra, which is uh, uh, mm-hmm. two two guys I've been working with for for a while now too. Even mm-hmm. though I only released a tape mm-hmm. of theirs, but I've 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 organized several concerts mm-hmm. uh, with them, and I love the way they process sound in a live way, mm-hmm. as you will see probably. It's made made of Carlos Gudinho and Mestre André, and so Mestre André does like an ex does like a totally uh, and uh, what do you call it like um, uh, live processing of acoustic yeah. elements done by mm-hmm. uh, by Carlos Gudinho, which is and he's mm-hmm. and he's very magical to watch. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I always like the fact that I'm watching two people uh, just just improvising and doing and reacting to their environment mm-hmm. and, and instruments in this case mm-hmm. objects. Without mm-hmm. having any visuals, so in their case, there's no, there's no visuals. You, 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 you still mesmerized by the way they're processing this sound. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I proposed it to to Kerrickson as 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 the first part of uh, a discrepant residency, mm-hmm. which in the way reflects the kind of kind the, the kind of Atlantic connection. So they Portuguese, then this 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 other band that I'm involved with called Lagos, which is basically Tenerife. So mm-hmm. this this idea that we we we're getting coasts and archipelagos together to create this kind of like uh, exponential mm-hmm. Atlantic feeling uh, mm-hmm. or islands um, uh, feeling, you know that things can happen outside and are sometimes more interesting than because this is the motives of the level. I, I still believe that experimental music is still more or or different music is much more interesting when they're far away from from the big metropolis centers. Metropolis are, mm-hmm. are perfect to 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 present them, mm-hmm. but they're not perfect these days to, in my opinion, to nourish them and to to mm-hmm. make sure artists continue to making art without mm-hmm. having to worry about rents and <laughs> and everything yeah. else yeah. in between. Mm-hmm. But um, again, I'm digressing. So uh, mm-hmm. Banya da Cobra is this project that I'm that I've been into. They don't have many records out. They mostly uh, like a prefer- like a live uh, project because mm-hmm. they always play in different uh, uh, special scenarios. So it was a shame they couldn't use the. I mean, I saw. I think the concert we're going to watch is the concert that was filmed in the tank, yes. and they mm-hmm. used it, the full resonance of the tank mm-hmm. of the Kerrickson tank to explore their their audio their audio mm-hmm. capabilities. Um, we also. Uh, explore the island because I w- it was this was part of the idea. So we we had little performances, uh, private performances. So they would say it was like very early in the morning or at the end of mm-hmm. uh, of, the, of the day where there wouldn't be no one. Um, of using several places, you know, inherent acoustic acoustics mm-hmm. to perform. So and we recorded a lot of that. So mm-hmm. we, in a cave in a beach under under in a in an old um stone masonry mm-hmm. like uh, mm-hmm. cantonera as they say in, in spanish mm-hmm. so there's more i think that would come of it as a collaboration between banya da cobra and lagos and maybe mm-hmm. the part two of the residency mm-hmm. yeah i i had the opportunity to to, to uh, watch them live in in lisboa in in lisboa festival um, okay, okay. two years ago i think it was 
uh, in this amazing place, uh, Maedawa. Um, yeah. And it, it's it's an amazing uh, combination of music because uh, it's, it's what you said. I mean, it's two guys working at the same time, um, interchanging ideas uh, on live performance. Not so many, not not so much prepared, but with a lot of, I guess, uh, confidence and and, yeah. and and the sense of they know each other's moves. In advance, yeah, they, so they, very, they can talk in a, in a super rich um, um, language. Yes, uh, and I, I mean I've seen mm. every concert is different and 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 good. Mm. <laughs> I mean it could be different ones better than the others. They're all very good, mm. and I, I remember seeing them. I mean it was this time where I in Tenerife this week in Tenerife where I saw uh, the Tank concert, and then two mm. days later at the uh, Gare uh, the the venue, mm. and it was a completely different show. And and mm -hmm. very assured. I mean, there was no sense of what are we doing here, or should we just cut this, cut that? No, it was mm -hmm. perfectly in tune with each other, and that's what it's it's mm -hmm. it's important, I guess. Yeah, and there is also it's interesting you mentioned this kind of um, uh, ge geographic feature, or even mm, sociological, or even ethnographic, because their music had something of it. It has a resonance on on music traditions and yeah. on kind of ancient stuff. Because uh, I know more or less that uh, the work of uh, Mr. Andre and, and and I understand more or less his approach and this combination of soundscapeism, uh, uh, deep listening, uh, and and try to draw all these connections with with who we are, uh, kind of things of identity through sound. It's it's absolutely brilliant, and I hope and I guess uh, because I haven't seen the concert yet, it's going to reflect on that for sure on on this tank. Um, for those who don't know about the tank, because uh, as you know, this this broadcast out today, we are just fully doing it in English. The tank is the main venue of, of Ketoxen Festival, and it's um, an old Ketoxen tank yeah. of the, on the harbor of uh, Santa Cruz de Tenerife, uh, which has been used as a venue. And one of his main features is a circular space with uh, an amazing reverb, which I hope to to experience someday <laughs> yes. personally. Um, and 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 that's more or less it. Uh, we take a few ideas and beautiful thoughts uh, that you mentioned it, uh, when you were diverging before and talking about uh, this idea of of doing and working on experimental territories in places they are not supposed to be for that end. And and I I, I totally concur on that idea. Uh, I think there is a lot of happening, a lot of things happening there, uh, fresh things and new things happening on uh, when you confront with. With other audiences, even uh, or, or people who never heard this kind of music before, and yeah. you discover I, I, that's my personal approach on that. I, I always love to to be involved in projects and festivals and uh, in big cities where there is a, 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 a an audience who knows what are they doing. But I I kind of feel more comfortable even when the audience is absolutely surprised because they haven't heard that before. And there yeah. is a certain sense of familiarity. I don't know if you have this feeling also that that people is like, oh, this is not that weird. I, I totally get it. Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it goes both ways. I mean, I find it really interesting where, uh, because it, because uh, experimental music or weird music, we, we, we kind of train our, our ear to, to listen to certain mm -hmm. things. And we have like a, a sonic, what I call like the sonic background. Mm -hmm. uh, like you, you, you know, so you have the total different reaction from someone who's never been exposed to that kind of music. But mm. it's it's so much more rewarding when someone comes from a completely, uh, you know, a virgin <laughs> background on the, on that kind and and gets it. Absolutely. You know, it's so much more rewarding than playing to an audience of you know three hundred people who know exactly what they what they are mm -hmm. listening to and and still get it. I mean, not because I'm part of that of of, of that yeah. culture, but but. Mm -hmm. um, it's and and there's that element too. What I, I don't want to, you know, where, where for instance, in the, in the space of in, in the in the case of Kerrickson, where they they still, you know, regardless of what of what um, what they're doing or not, they they are nourishing that that mm -hmm. sound and that culture and that different kind of of, of vibration in in a mm -hmm. place where it will be more difficult than let's say you know Barcelona or Berlin or. Or London, and that's that's what I found I found really interesting. And I mean, mm. I, I've been when we were talking about uh, meeting meeting the artists. I, I I work with a lot of artists around the world, and it's it's refreshing to see that you know you, you still have all these 
scenes, as you, as some people will call it, everywhere that are yeah. that are very alive, but they don't, they don't get the same kind of exposure because everything is focused on the big cities. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. Amazing. Um, we keep that th those those thoughts, and and we can, here in in, in El Yatalaya, we like to also talk about this kind of, of situations because uh, we are here to stay as a channel for for experimental music to to distribute and broadcast music. So that, that's one of our focus of interest is discussing this kind of stuff, and and also since we are also based in the periphery uh, cities of Spain, it's something we always <laughs> like to to call out. Um, thank you very much, uh, Gonzalo. You. I just want. Uh, Uh, we usually ask you about uh, future plans and projects uh, on the coming. I don't know if you can share uh, a little bit about what what, what we will encounter uh, if, if we navigate uh, your websites on on the future. There's a few. There's a few. Um, I mean, there's a lot of releases as usual. There, there will be a lot of releases uh, from all all different labels. Um, I mean, too many to. They will be appearing <laughs> over the next months. Uh, there will be probably another residency like Venga da Cobra with with mm -hmm. Caroxen involving nice. international artists. Mm -hmm. So I think the first one was we will call it the Atlantic one, mm -hmm. and the next one will be the Pacific one. Nice. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, so to keep it balanced in this in this like ocean islands uh, uh, themes. Uh, and then hopefully when things open up, there will be like concerts, you know, we will we'll go back. I'm still waiting, you know, I'm still, I've never been put for so long, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still enjoying it, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I do feel the need to get out there yeah. mm -hmm. and travel and, and, and present music because that's, that's ultimately it's, it's the greatest way, you know, it's the, yeah. the live presentation, you know, that the records are there as a record. That's why it's called a record, and then and then the the live presentation is what really gets everyone going. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, we invite uh, our watchers and listeners on podcasts and, uh, and on Twitch to navigate on the website of Discrepan, which is discrepan.net. Uh, there you will have access to these other sub labels. Uh, you can follow them. I guess you have a mailing list, so you can also. Um, be uh, in contact with with what's going to happen in there. Um, and yeah, thank you, Gonzalo, for being with us. And thank uh, you, uh, it's been a pleasure. And I hope uh, we can meet again here or physically at some point in the future. Definitely, physically, we're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when this is all over. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>